Man is condemned to be free. Therefore, man is defined as a useless passion. Useless passion. So that is what the existentialist approach. Clear? So therefore, we have three existentialist philosophers, namely Soren Kierkegaard, Nietzsche and Jean Paul Sartre. Okay, so we will say something about Sartre now. This emphasis which Nietzsche placed on the will to power can be exemplified in another model of the Sartre in man. So, what is that? This emphasis of the freedom, will, will to, will to, uh, will to power can be exemplified in another model of the Sartre in man. Sartre defines man from the category of freedom. He defines man from the category of freedom. Comma, fails to see him as a being capable of fully realizing this freedom. So, capable of not fully realizing this freedom. He defines man as freedom, but then he says, well, he is condemned to be free. He is not going to realize it completely. Hence, he who said that man is condemned to be free ends up by saying that man is a useless passion. So, man is free, but then in the realization of this freedom, Sartre realizes that man reaches nowhere. Therefore, he calls this passion for freedom a useless one. So, man as a underline that useless passion. The former one, will to power. In such a mode of thinking, again the defect, in such a mode of thinking, the other is one who restricts my freedom. So the other is the one who restricts my freedom because will to power, freedom being realized, in the process of realizing my freedom, I find that the other is, what is he doing? What is he or she doing? Restricting, restricting or pulling my leg in my process of growth. So, the other is restricting my freedom. Therefore, what happens? He is my, my rival. The other is my rival. Why? The other is restricting me. In the realization of my freedom, comma, and Sartre does not hesitate to call him hell. The other, the other is hell. Why? The other does sin. The other restricts. The other restricts my freedom. It doesn't allow me to move the way I want to realize my freedom. Therefore, he restricts my freedom. Therefore, my freedom is a useless passion. To realize myself, I cannot completely because the other restricts my freedom. Therefore, the passion for freedom within me is a useless passion. Fundamentally, these models, these two models, clear, no? Fundamentally, these two models fail in adequately responding to the dimension of the other, the other. So, this could be stated as a basic criticism against these two forms of thinking. What is that? Fundamentally, these models fail in adequately responding 
to the dimension of the other. The other. Well, you cannot achieve anything here on earth without the other. If you bracket someone, the other also will bracket you. If you don't mind the other, the other also has the power, the potential to have a non-care attitude. So in other words, well, either you rise or fall with the other. Therefore, this dimension, the existence of the other, either positively or negatively, the, the other is also having a lot of positive influence upon me, on me. Therefore, all that was neglected by these philosophers. Therefore, basically, they fail to enter into, basically, they fail to enter into a healthy interpersonal interpersonal relationship so in other words what happens they fail to enter into a healthy interpersonal relationship with the other with the other so the last sentence you can write down I will go slowly this is complemented this is complemented by the model which we now examine in the other dimension of existential understanding of man namely man as the dialogical being, not biological, dialogical, man in dialogue. Man as the dialogical being. I will repeat that sentence once again. This is complemented by the model which we now examine in the other dimension of the existential understanding of man, namely, man as the dialogical D I A L O G I C A L dialogical being. So we are still going to be with existentialism. We have seen already three of them, namely Soren Girkagar, Nietzsche, and Sartre. And now by closely in this hour, during this hour, examining Nietzsche and Sartre, we found that they are moving in the direct, straight direction without the other. So in other words, well, they were worried only about realizing their own will or realizing their own freedom at the neglect of the other. Therefore, we get a dimension developed here, but then this dimension developed is incomplete without the other. Therefore, we go into the third dimension, namely man in dialogue. Man in dialogue. That will be the content of next class. So that will be, we are with, don't forget, division number two, the third division, man in dialogue. Which we will see in the next class. So, Nietzsche, Sartre we have seen. And now, next will be man in dialogue. There, there are or no two philosophers in that. Okay. That we will see in the next class.
थैंक यू